Hey everyone, it's Kim, and welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. Welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. If you're new to my channel, a special hello. I specialize in the world of food writing, which is a subgenre of nonfiction reading. I polled my subscribers on my community tab and asked what you guys were interested in seeing. And one concept or video idea that moved to the top of the, the ranking was how do I shop for food writing books? So I wanted to take you on the journey and show you how I looked for anticipated releases for food writing books. And then some of the tricks and trades I have on where I'm actually going to purchase my books from. So today's episode, depending on how long this is, there might be a couple episodes or I'm gonna just edit this whole section out. I'm gonna start with Amazon and show you how Amazon is categorizing food writing. It's not the most straightforward subgenre to find. So I'll show you some tricks and some other places I do find food writing books or in other areas where they intersect such as food agriculture or in the business and restaurant space. So let's go ahead and get started. So first we're gonna to go to amazon.com, our good old evil corporate entity and go into the books space. Under books, you can look on this left-hand side. There's a lot of different categories on here. Obviously, there is a recommended top picks for you. That's based on like what I've already searched in the past. So if you look on the left, one of the first places I'm gonna start is in cookbooks, food, and wine. I opened it in a new tab because I like to have a home base to go back to. Under cookbooks, food, and wine, you'll see there's a whole breakdown of different categories that are really only set by Amazon. So you might not always find these same categories when you go to Barnes and Nobles, for example. One of the places I'm immediately gonna look is under cooking, education, and reference. Cooking, education, and reference might sound like textbooks, but trust me, a lot of good stuff gets categorized under here. So again, I've opened a new tab, it just helps me. And now look what shows up under cooking education reference. Reference books, history books, essays, culinary biographies, and food industry. I'm sure you guys can guess that I, I mean, I own Dessert Can Save the World under essays. I've read Stanley Tucci's book, Taste. I own Becoming Trader Joe under food industry. So if you want to even just stop here, you can look at some of the bestsellers, and this is a great place to start. Bestsellers, top rated, most wished for. Oh, hey, I have this too. Um, I do find that in this space, a lot of the most gifted and featured deals are more cookbooks than anything else. Oh, look, Crying in H Mart, for example. And that's okay. This is a great top level place just to, to start because maybe you just don't know exactly what you're looking for. Now, and there is nothing wrong with using bestsellers lists as your starting place. I just happen to know a little bit more of what I'm looking for. So let's start under food industry. And as you'll see, food industry, you're farther down on the funnel, which as a reference point, it should, sh oh, it doesn't show you on the left. It used to show you how far down that funnel you've gone. Now you're in restaurant and food industry and you have best sellers, top rated, most wished for, and hot new releases, most gifted and feature deals. Now. I'll admit, I tend to look under hot new releases because I'm a forward thinking looker, forward thinking looker, that's not a great phrase. I like to look ahead, but I also like to look at most wished for. So let's go ahead and open up these two lists. So what is most wished for? Um, some of these are cookbooks or beginner guidebooks. Like I love that the art of cheese making is really up at the top of this list. That's pretty awesome. But then eventually the algorithm can get a little strange. Like, I don't know why Barbarians at the Gate, the fall of RJR Nabisco is here. You'll also get I Own the Secret Life of Groceries. I'll own I own this one and this one and this one. And you'll start to see the same books twice. So The Secret Life of Groceries. But look, that's the Kindle edition. Here it is again as a book. So just keep that kind of stuff in mind. It's not a perfect system. I wish I could fil filter out, excuse me, um, duplicate duplicative books because it's the same book. It's just in a different format. But I guess I guess Amazon's just really ranking it by sales. Um, so really quick, I'm just going to look at that Barbarian book. Barbarians at the Gate, The Fall of RJR Nabisco. Ooh. 
What the heck is... Like, this has nothing to do with food writing. Do you know what I mean? Like... What the heck is- am I dumb? What is RJR Nabisco? Hmm. Huh. Okay, so I guess RJR Nabisco was a food processing company that also owned tobacco and food products. So maybe it's a corporate book, which Nabisco is now owned by Mondelez, which is a totally different company. I don't read a lot in the tobacco space. I know it's considered consumer product goods, but it's not food to me. Um, so I guess it's, it actually could be an interesting book. It is an American conglomerate selling tobacco and food products headquartered in Callion Building in Midtown. RJR Nabisco stopped operating as a single entity in 1999, but both areas still, huh, there was a buyout. Okay, so maybe that's what it's about. So that is just one section of the food and restaurant industry. And let's look under new releases. I have never heard of Bitcoin and beef. That's interesting. Satisfaction Guarantee just came out. I know you guys have been in my comments telling me this is a lovely book to read and I might go pick it up this weekend. I've been trying to limit how many new books I buy. I've been trying really hard to work on my TBR. It's not the easiest when there's so many good books out there. So this is um, restaurant and food industry new releases. You're seeing everything from beekeeping, food biographies, Catching Hell. So there's a lot of really fun, ooh, real deal. A oh, raw deal. Wow, I can read. Mm, when do you come out? Are you already? Oh, dis oof, December, very far away. Not gonna worry about that one. And that's essentially where I start. I definitely will grab books from here, put them on future wish lists or release list so that when I when I give you guys my quarterly release videos, that's essentially how I find books. Essentially, I will put them under release playlists or release wish lists and go back to them at a later time. Let me really quickly find out beef and Bitcoin. Oh, beef and Bitcoin just came out. Hmm. Interesting. Today, society is faced with the highest rates of chronic disease in human history and an ever-increasing wealth gap. Open your mind to discover the truth behind the real issues plagued. All right, I, don't, I already don't like this book because telling me to open my mind, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I want to read this. It's 240 pages. Who published this? Ah, independently published. Interesting. Now, I don't know, I, I shouldn't be so critical of independently published books, but in the food space, I tend to be much more critical of this because there's a lot of science that goes behind the food and what we make. Now, at the bottom, as you scroll through details, you can find things like the publisher. You can also find bestsellers ranks and different categories. Another category where I look for books is in the agriculture industry. So before I move into agriculture, just a reminder that where I started was under cookbooks, food and wine, then I clicked into cooking education and reference. And then I went in from each of these different buckets. Culinary biographies and essays is a lot more fun. So let's take a real quick peek in here. Of course, a lot of the top rated books belong to the late Anthony Bourdain. They always do. Let's see what else is in here. I've talked about to boldly grow. This is where things start to get a little, I get a little confused on the algorithm. Oh, here's another example again. Here it is as an audiobook. Here it is as a hardcover book. Um, a lot of these are food related, but every once in a while, I get this strange, like a strange book shows up in the, in this list. The so probably a good example is what on earth is Madhouse at the end of the earth? I'll open the new tab, Abelka's Journey on a Dark Antarctic Night. Then I have to open this up and look at all of this different description. And then I also like to look at what genre this is under. Apparently it is considered travel. Um, so it is nonfiction, but sometimes I will admit, I judge a book by its cover. So sometimes I look at some of the recommendations on this list and I'm like, what are you? What is this book? 
Um, so this is about a three-year expedition abroad, a good ship um, with dreams of glory. He's heading to Antarctica. Um, things go wrong. Things go wrong. So to me, this is cool, but what does this have to do with food writing? I'm not really sure. But let's continue on and move into agriculture. So I'm going to close out all of these tabs and essentially I'll start again. I'll look under my categories. Different categories you can look into would be history or business and money. So let's go into business and money. Because now I don't even, I just closed out the tab where agriculture is and I don't even know where it is in Amazon. So let's look under business and money. There's tons of different categories as well. The one that pops out to me, industries. So again, we're going to filter even deeper. Let's open up industries. Within industries, you have da 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 agriculture. So we can go into agriculture, hospitality, travel, and tourism, which, hey, Black, White, and the Gray is a restaurant. Um, I can see why they put this on the cover. You can also go into retailing because there is a level of food and retail. You could also probably look into energy and mining or service. So I'm going to go into agriculture. And then we just follow the same exact process. The agriculture industry does not have any other subsections, but if you look at what one of the best sellers is, it's Fast Food Nation. That's definitely a book about the food industry. So I like to look under, again, let's look under new releases. You'll, you basically are going to get, you get the idea, I think, at this point. Um, but now I'm just curious. So Bitcoin and Beef, here it is again. I don't get how this is a number one book and it's self-published. Maybe it's great. I have no idea. I have very little desire to read it. I don't understand Bitcoin fundamentally. I don't know if it's me. Am I an old millennial? Who, who the hell knows? I just, I don't have any interest in it. Slaves for Peanuts. Hey, pecan, a book about pecans. Let me learn about that. And as you can see, we're definitely getting into the intersection of food. Ooh, the cheese war. Tell me more. And this is where I get really psyched about things. There's books about milk and so on. So pecan came out. Oh, pecan just came out. So let me add this to, I'm going to put on my 2022 private books list because I haven't broken it up by category yet. We'll get out of agriculture. Here's hospitality, travel, and tourism. As you can see, again, no other subcategories instead of, except for maybe like hot new releases. Scanned. Oh, okay. Scanned is about vaccines and passports. I can see why this is travel. Um, so this might be a little bit harder to dig through. I'm seeing some hospitality. Some fish books, dominoes. So keep that in mind. These are large genres that incorporate a lot of different sub-territories. So you might have to dig a little bit. But now let me also say, this is my starting place for a book. So let's say I really want to get satisfaction guaranteed. I understand the appeal of Audible and audiobooks. I also understand the appeal of two-day shipping. I am someone who owns a butt ton of books that I still have to read. I don't need two-day shipping. And honestly, I'd rather give my money to an independent bookstore or a small bookstore or bookshop.org. For audiobooks, I will go and see if it's on Scribd because I do pay for Scribd, but Libro FM, Libby is a great way to look for your local library. So I will grab this title and quite literally, I'll open up Thrift Books, bookshop.org, and scribed and I will just drop it in here and it looks like right now $24 because it is a brand new book I'm not shocked to see it $24 $25 is pretty much the norm to get it as a hardcover it is a 2022 release and it looks like it's here as an audiobook ah, that's how I I've lately I've been consuming a lot more by audiobooks so that is essentially how I start when it comes to Amazon. This is how I like to look for books at the beginning of my search. 
And I will start with thriftbooksbookshop.org and Scribe when it comes to new 2022 releases. This is the first place I look for books. Now, if you guys are interested in finding out other ways I search for books, whether that's food writing audiobooks or Kim, how do you look for books on thrift books or other third party websites besides Amazon like Barnes and Nobles? Hit me up in the comments below and I am more than happy to do a follow up episode on how I hunt for food writing books. I'd say 70% of my books I buy now are actually used. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested in more, please feel free to leave me a note down in the comments below. Don't forget to, to, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.